The FDA is naming names in a new report. The FDA put 15 national retailers on notice for allegedly selling tobacco products and e-cigarettes to minors. Exxon, Chevron, 7-Eleven, Walgreens, Walmart, and more are on that list. And joining us right now is FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb. Uh, Dr. Gottlieb, thank you for being here today. What, what, what brought about this action? Well, what's happening now is we're targeting corporate entities and not just individual stores. We've taken a lot of actions against individual stores. We've done more than a million inspections of individual stores in conjunction with the states looking for violative tobacco sales to minors. Um, when we looked across our data, we found large national chains that had a very high rate of recidivism, a lot of uh, violations across their individual stores. Um, and they're implementing corporate policies to condition those sales. And we're now going to hold them accountable at a corporate level for those policies and look at their culture of compliance. And some of these stores have substantial violations. In the case of Walgreens, 22% of the stores that we inspected, over 6,000 stores, had violative sales to minors um, and many with repeat violations. What do, you, what do you mean 22 percent? 22 percent of all cigarettes that they're sale, selling are going to minors? 22 percent of all the stores where we did, we attempted undercover buys using um, minors, using shoppers that were posing as minors, um, had actually sold the cigarettes to the undercover shoppers, and so they had violations. So we, we, they have about 10,000 stores nationally. We inspected about over 6,000 of them and 22% of the 6,000 that we inspected actually sold tobacco sales to, uh, to minors. Do you think they were doing this knowingly or just uh, a case of uh, lack of uh, tight enough controls? Well, I hope they're not doing it knowingly. Um, I think it's a case of lack of good controls. Um, you know, there's a perception that a lot of the tobacco sales are sort of individual mom and pop stores, but we're seeing a lot of violations and repeat violations across large corporate chains that should know better, that should have good corporate compliance policies. Walmart was also on the list of the top 15. A lot of them were gas stations. Some had repeat violation rates or violation rates as high as 44 percent. Um, but, you know, Kroger's, Walmart was on the list, dollar stores. So there were some stores on that list that have the ability to implement good corporate-wide compliance practices and impose them on individual stores. And yet they have a lot of repeat violations and a lot of violations across their individual outlets. Scott, what's been the reaction from the companies that you've spoken to, if you have spoken to any of them to this point? Well, Walgreens, we've invited in to have a discussion about their corporate policy. The other stores we've sent letters to inquiring about what their policies are. But there are actions that we can take now. We can send corporate-wide warning letters. Um, we can certainly sanction individual stores. We have a lot of civil um, penalties that we can impose. We've never imposed a criminal sanction, but we certainly have imposed civil sanctions in the past. And we have gone as far as issuing, for example, corporate warning letters in other situations across our regulatory portfolio and something that's certainly open to us in this situation. Why are you singling out Walgreens so much? Why have they been invited in versus letters to the rest? You've mentioned them a lot. Uh, uh, their rates in the 20 percent, not, not acceptable of course, but there was others on your list there which are in the 30 plus percent. Well, Walgreens really got us started looking at this because Walgreens, we had a situation about three weeks ago, four weeks ago now, where we sent a letter, a no tobacco sale order to a Walgreens pharmacy outlet that had a lot of repeat violations. Um, and we looked at the data across the Walgreens outlet at that time and found a very high rate of violations across their entire chain. Um, and they are a pharmacy, so I think that does factor into this because the question is, does the pharmacy environment create a perception that can either help facilitate those tobacco sales or, or create a perception in the minds of consumers shopping in a pharmacy environment that somehow tobacco might be, um, you know, more safe than it otherwise is. And then once we looked at Walgreens, we did do the steps of looking across the other corporate chains, and that's the information we're putting out, we put out yesterday. We looked at the rates across other corporate entities, um, and we found a lot that were higher. The gas stations are much higher, but Walgreens is up there. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have a perception that the gas stations would be high, unfortunately. I don't think people expect Walgreens and Walmart and other reputable um, chains to have these kinds of rates of, of violations. Was there, was there any corporate parent, any retail chain that you found that was noticeably better than the others? Well, it's a good question, Becky. We only looked at the ones that were high right now. Um, you know, maybe we'll give gold stars as well and look at the big chains that, uh, um, that did a good job I, I and see what they're doing. I just wonder if there are corporate practices that work well. Yeah, no, that's exactly, I mean, that's a great question, and, and we have to go down, down through our data to look at um, chains that are doing a good job, large chains that are doing a good job, and then look at what they're doing. Um, right now, we want to understand what the chains that are doing a bad job uh, are not doing, um, but we're going to continue to go through this data. This is a new, again, this is a new effort for the agency 
to look not just at individual stores, which is what we've historically done, but now look across large national chains. You know, and a national chain with a big footprint can have a big impact. If we can get these big chains to impose better compliance policies and crack down on these sales, that's going to have a big distributed effect on overall availability to miners. What was the sample size, Dr. Gottlieb? I just want to go back. Some of those percentages, as you say, are way higher than any of us would expect. But when you say 22% of the undercover purchases you, you put in place, what's the sort of sample size uh, that was used here? These are large sample sizes. So, you know, we've inspected more than a majority of the outlets. So in the case of Walgreens, I believe they have around 10,000 outlets. I think we inspected about 6,500 and found violations across 22% of those 6,500. Um, so I think it's fair to say that this mm -hmm. is representative of the overall, um, you know, chain's behavior, if you will. Um, we inspected well more than a majority of their stores. And that's true in most of the other cases. Um, we do a lot of inspections, and so we have a pretty good sample size on all these national chains. On the flip side, Dr. Gottlieb, uh, different issue. Uh, clearly, uh, cigarette sales overall aren't uh, increasing to the, the rate that they did uh, in past decades. That's partly down to e-cigarettes. Is that something uh, where you see growth of e-cigarettes that, that you're, you're kind of reassured by, or have they got their own problems attached? Well, look, we think e-cigarettes can be a safer alternative for currently addicted adult smokers to transition fully to an e-cigarette off of combustible tobacco. But safer does not mean they're safe, and they're not safe. And we see accruing data um, that they do cause harm. Certainly, they cause addiction to nicotine, or they sustain addiction to nicotine. But they also have direct effects on the lung, and we're seeing increasingly increasing amounts of data showing that. And so where we're really concerned is the rising youth use of these products. Um, there is nothing short of an epidemic of use of these products among kids. And we have to find ways to try to close off the access and appeal of these products to kids while not foreclosing the opportunity for adults to use these products as a smoking cessation tool. And your plan for that is, is to, to try and stop them being sold in convenience stores? Well, a number of things. We're, gonna, we're, we're seeking to limit access to the flavored products in the convenience stores. Um, the flavored products, 70% of kids who use e-cigarettes report using flavored products, and the flavors are one of the primary reasons that they're attracted to the e-cigarettes, and the convenience stores are an outlet where they're getting them. So we're seeking to restrict access in the convenience stores of the flavored products uh, and try to move the, the sales of the flavored products into the adult-only vaping shops, which by and large do a better job of restricting access um, to minors. The other thing we're doing right now is re-examining re um, compliance dates on whether or not we call in applications for the e-cigarettes sooner than we had originally determined to do um, as a way to make sure that they're demonstrating with data that they're actually having the intended public health impact that they purport to have.